helpful sign, but it's a little bit lower. Behind the sign at the very top of the hill is, you know, where the actual site is. So we got we got some um, huge fans that came in about 2014. I mean, 10 years since the very first episode aired on television. And this one, I would say, was like the most popular site of the whole tour. So they came here. They're huge Lost fans. They're like the fans of the fans. And they gathered from 15 different countries. They created one big group of a like, little over 170 people and came right here to Kula. And they all wanted to get off right here. You hear these golf clubs. We do have a few other sites um, that I'll be able to point out as we go along. Here on to the left hand side, they also use this area here for a couple like stream or river uh, scenes that they had in the movie. We do have the others camp or at least the area where they would point to for the others camp as well as uh, Richard Alpert's house that we're going to be passing by along the way. But right up next around this corner we have Godzilla. This is the 1998 version starring Matthew Broderick and the huge lizard himself. Actually the entire valley of Pava was used for the film but we do have a few footprints that Godzilla left behind. And this would be on to our far right hand side. And there's going to be one more off to our left, so no worries, everyone will get to see that little footprint today on both sides of the bus. Now initially these footprints were 6 to 7 feet deep and they totaled to 11. Uh, we do now have 4 left behind because that was just way too many holes here in the valley. Cows kept falling into them and it was just not a good situation. So you can imagine 11 huge holes in this valley with cows just going boop, 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 and falling in all around. So we decided to fill in seven of the footprints completely. And the four that we'll see today, there's one more behind on the hillside there on the right. So two technically off to our right hand side, two on our left. Um, the four that we now see today are all that we have left. And we filled them into a safe, maybe two to three feet deep. Now the cows are safely roaming in Cabo. Um, in 2014, I want to say, Godzilla did come back to the ranch, but they went to the southern end of our property. We're more northern. And so they didn't make their way back here to Cabo Valley at that time. But for a little bit, the most recent Godzilla movie that came out in 2015. I believe it was May 2015. It was released. Well, here on our left hand side, we have another Godzilla footprint here, and I want more straight ahead, a little ways past the ATV. Huge productions, actually, a really common question that we're asked here at the ranch. Whenever huge productions come through, how do we go about um, adjusting our tours or how do we work with them? It really is situational. Every movie is a wholly different uh, circumstance. And so, movies like Jurassic World, um, we changed up a few routes. We to reroute a couple of tours. They were very private, they didn't want to be seen at all. But very different from this one here. Mike and Dave need a wedding date. So on the left hand side of us is where we had huge mounds of dirt. And this is where they filmed all of the ATV scenes in the movie. Um, the two guys are trying to impress these girls to take his dates to a wedding. And then on the right hand side, this is where their base was. So this is where they had trailers here in the area. They had, they had a couple of tents, which is where they would hang out while they would wait for their next scene. But this road, you know, went right through their movie set and we literally got to drive through on a regular basis. So we got to see the actors, we got to see them setting up for the next scene, which is a really cool experience for everyone, guides and guests alike, because this is something that we even, even though we work here, we still rarely get to see the behind the scenes and what goes on. So it was really refreshing. We didn't have to give them any code names or go around and kind of skirt around certain details. We got to see it as it was as it was going on. So it was really, really cool. A really fun um, experience. Guests got to see Zach Efron and Anna Kendrick on a daily basis for about a month and a half. So they really enjoyed that as well. Um, now here, next up, we got You, Me, and Dupree. This movie stars Kate Hudson, Matt Dillon, and Owen Wilson. This road was used as a landing strip for an airplane in the film. Maybe like the first 15 minutes of the movie, you can see this this area of the valley there. Um, but the rest of the movie was filmed in the southern end of our property, next to our fish pond, our ancient Hawaiian fish pond, which is where we have beautiful venues for like weddings and parties. And so the wedding scenes are shot there, as well as the ceremony and honeymoon buffalo scenes were all shot uh, in Hucky Pool, which is where our only fish pond is. Another one off to our left hand side, we have Kubernetes Tribe, starring Richard Dreyfus and Jenna Elfman. This film was shot right here at the bottom of this hill on our left hand side of us, kind of by that hollow bush out over there. Um, a village, a Papua New Guinea village was um, right here, set up. That was the movie set because these guys played anthropologists. 
that came to discover a new Papua New Guinea tribe, but all they really did in the movie was build a fake one in their backyard and uh, hire a bunch of actors to act as Papuans. So, they're a bunch of liars in the film. It uh, was expected to be like a hilariously funny comedy, it actually ended up being a lot of scary fun, unfortunately. And then here we have 50 First Dates, starring Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Rob Schneider. Right here in the middle of this road in front of the bus is where Little Willie the Penguin was placed in the middle of. We can see him in the picture here on our left hand side. Um, now, the entire goal in the movie is Adam Sandler is trying to catch the attention of Drew Barrymore. So he puts the penguin in the middle of the road, she runs him over and failed attempt. After all of these failed attempts, um, including his friend, played by Rob Schneider, pretending to beat him up right here on the side of the road, but also he getting beaten, so Paul will try to anyway with a fight to pay more. Um, that happened. So much of these failed attempts eventually there is probably ever after and they do end up together. So they filmed a lot of the kissing scenes here in this valley at different times, in different um, in different areas. Uh, we also had Hoki Lao Cafe built on our property next to our fish pond. Uh, but it was broken down after filming the finish. So they were here quite a bit. They use a lot of different areas here cool already. Up to our right hand side, little ways past that dirt mound there. That area was known as the Others Camp from Lost. To the left hand side of it, we have this um, sign here that says Wind Talkers. This movie was directed by John Woo, stars Nicolas Cage, Christian Slater, and Adam Beach. It was a World War II film based off of the Battle of Saipan. Now, this was a huge production. 750 uh, extras were brought here to the valley, and that was extras. So that's on top of the crew, on top of the actors. Okay of people here. They designated 280 live explosives right here in one day of filming, which actually set a record at the time. And John Wu purchased Cobb for an entire day. They were here for about three months in total, preparing the area to look like a battlefield. But for that one day of filming, um, where they blew up all those bombs, John Wu purchased Cobb so that way everyone was, you know, kind of out of the area and they knew everyone would be safe. Now here on the left hand side of us, there is no sign because the cows kept knocking it down. But this is where we had uh, Mighty Joe Young filmed. In this area is where the African village was uh, set. Straight ahead we have Joe's Mountain there, that peak with the clouds covering the tip of it. Um, it was apparently beautifully put together, but all the props that were left behind from this film were then blown up when Wintarkers came through and they set off all those bombs here in the valley. So we lost all of our props from Mighty Joe Young. Now coming up, we're going to be driving through a Kukuina Grove. The Kukui tree is the state tree of Hawaii today. Um, you guys might have seen it. It's a bunch of black seeds strung upon a stone tree. In ancient times, Hawaiians would actually use those seeds to make candles. So, so that was its most useful, or that was a really good resource for them, and it's its most useful way that they could use it. There's a lot of different things that it could be used for though. You can gather medicine from the tree, you could gather a sap called pilali sap, which was used to capture birds because it was very sticky and viscous. So some of the sap would be dabbed on some branches and then the birds would get stuck there. But like these trees here off to the right and left hand sides of us, these are known as kukui nut trees. The seeds are like the size of golf balls. They're light green in color. And it was very rare to see this seed in lay form because it was very laborious to make a single lay. So that that was rarely seen. What we now see today very often in different stores, like ABC stores and things like that, it was actually rarely seen back in the day. So it was a symbol of royalty because it was so rare. And as I said earlier, it was instead used to make candles. Each nut can burn for about two to three minutes long, providing some light. Up ahead, off to our right hand side of us, we're going to be passing by what we call uh, the Hawaiian Village here in Kaaba. Mostly used by our education department to host different cultural activities, but this is also where Richard Albert's house is from this TV show, Lost. So we have a few hale here. Hale in Hawaii means house or hut. This one here off to the right hand side of us, this one um, is kind of bare, we can only see the framework of it. That's the one that they say was used as Richard Albert's house. And then the second one, or the other two that we see in front, or off to the left hand side of us, these are more like completed, they look thatched. So it's just examples of the different types of houses that ancient Hawaiians would have. Now though they're only single room huts, 
each house had its own purpose or function in the village. So if you could imagine taking your house little part, making each room its own individual hale, it's basically what the Hawaiians had, just in clusters instead of all connected together. So they were like different types, like a hale moi, moi means to sleep, so that's where the bedroom would be. A hale va'a, va'a means canoe, so that's where canoes would be parked inside of and worked on while they weren't out in the ocean. There's a hale aina, which is a dining room, and a hale pua, where food would be taken to before it was taken to the hale aina. So hale pua is where uh, men would eat their food and prepare the food in there. And then in the hale aina is where the women and children would eat their food. Now here on to the right hand side of the bus, we have another movie site. This is of the Boneyard from the movie King Kong, or just Kong Skull Island, the latest King Kong movie that came out in March of this year. This movie starred Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Jackson, and John Goodman. And uh, they also used areas in Hakiku on the southern end of the property. That is where the helicopter prop is. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to stop the bus. There you go. Um, yeah, that's where the helicopter, we have a huge helicopter prop in that area. They also filmed like crash scenes there as well. So when this movie was filming, that was towards the ending of 2015. It was a while ago and it was all of these uh, props have been covered ever since. So we need to wait till March for them to be like revealed. So we had a huge like skull off to the left inside of um, the bus here, covered with a tarp. Really hard to drive by and I guess not look at it. Like what's that? That looks like a gorilla. So they tried. They tried to be very discreet and secretive. They were very very private while they were filming here. Um, yeah, but we were all we were all onto them. So they were filming here off to the right hand side. They had fence lines built along both sides of the road. They tried because when we would drive up this hillside here, we just think we would reach this incline about this stop, this point here, we could see over the fence line. So we would just slowly make our way up this hill. Guess what? We'll take photos. We basically spot on them as much as we could for about three days. And then little did we know they were onto us and they doubled the fence lines after that. So they, they were very, very private for that filming. Okay. Now next up off to our left hand side of us, you guys are going to see Bella. Bella is our Texas long part. She comes from the movie The Rundown, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So technically she'll be the only celebrity we see today. But that's not, that's not too bad. So days that are a little bit cooler, like this one, not too hot and sunny. Um, she usually gets really close to the fence line. So we're going to see her up close just a little bit. Looks like she's at the other end right now. Well, we showcase her um, to give you guys ideas of what the first bowls look like when they arrived here in the island. They're actually two long horns brought over by George Vancouver in 1793. And of course that was the, you know, the origin of the cattle ranching industry here in the island today. But it all began with just two long horns. And the Hawaiians were very excited to see them. They had never seen creatures of that size on land. Um, they were brought over as gifts to the king. Which here we have. Off, uh, I don't know, she's like right there. Covered in black. So we gotta spray her down. It's like, hey, big girl. I know. Tell you what, it's she Hi. Yeah, so they were brought as gifts to the king, the two long horns. And the king actually put a law back on anyone harming or touching the bulls, which lasted about 40 years way too long. Just way too long for um, cattle, let alone any wild animal, do whatever they want. So they accumulated quite fast. There was so much of them after that amount of time, and they really started to scare the people. Um, you know, the locals had no idea how to handle them, to deal with them, or what to do with them at all. So what happened next is this is like on the third, um, he brought in some cowboys from Mexico. The cowboys were able to teach the Hawaiians how to break and ride a horse, as well as catch. Domesticated cattle, and slowly after that, and then the island began to spread the cattle ranching industry. And we've been a part of it 
the yeah, that develops out there. It's actually at the end of the movie George of the Jungle. As the credits are rolling, this is the background to the credits. Thank you. 